Um, I was born in America on the East Coast. My mother's Italian and my father's Palestinian Lebanese. They were they were born in America, so their parents were born other places, exotic places. And they were sort of frustrated artists. But my father went into business but was a very good portraiture artist. And my mother just has a wonderful decorative eye. So I was very supported and that's what I did. I just made things from the age of 14, then went to art school and did fine arts, which was very broad. And I mean, I feel I could have done anything, but it just evolved. I didn't think about it. It wasn't like this is a career path. It was just making things. I just love making things. I think the medieval came first, after a period of flowers, probably. Um, the medieval period is very, very rich in its symbolism, its significance of flowers, what the colors mean, the illuminated manuscripts, all the gold. I think I was the first to start in the airman um, business using gold just to enrich things. I love the way they paint the flowers to look like they're three-dimensional, like you could just pick them off the page. I loved the medieval tapestries because I was involved in that, knew how challenging the medium was. I loved the, the very muted colors, the lady in the unicorn, the beautiful fabrics, the flower, the, the flower, the mille fleur flower, ground, then in the back the beautiful rose background, the trees that show the fecundity of life, so they show the flowers and the fruit both at the same time. So that, I mean, you could just look at all that inspiration forever. Then, I'm not quite sure how the Klimt came about, I probably went to an exhibition in Vienna. And his squares and triangles and swirls just translate very easily into needlepoint. And again, his colors are, are exquisite for needlepoint. And so I look at all his work and I take bits and put them together. I mean, I'm doing a large one at the moment. And they said, oh yes, I can see the clip. And then you added some leopard skin of your own. And I said, no, look, here is a painting of a, of a naked woman. And behind is, there le is leopard skin, which people don't think of as clip. I'm inspired by so much, it's, I have to sort of direct myself and I'll think of colors probably first and then I'll look at different paintings, let's say of Klimt, and I'll put it together. It, it's so hard for me to say how it works because it's almost second nature for me. I just sit down, I draw, then I'll put it on graph paper and then we'll work with the colors, which is very important, and change the colors slightly and then the finished product. Mosaic is a bit like needlepoint in that you're building up with one little thing, another little thing, another little pieces. Mm. And with stitching, it's a stitch and it stitches, so it's repetitive. Um, I started the mosaic because my son, when he was young, we used to go down to the stream, quite close to the house, and we found blue and white shards, little fragments, and we collected them. And then we went home, and because he was so high, he's now six foot five, we did a windowsill. And someone saw it, and someone commissioned me to do his factory, Moorcroft Pottery. So he had all these beautiful shards. So that's sort of how it developed, and I love it as much as the needlepoint. I've done grottos, I've done gardens, I've done obelisks. Um, I lately, just continuing the portraiture, because I did my woven tapestries were archetypal figures like the Statue of Liberty, Peter Blake, David Hockney, Tutankhamun, and then I went into the, um, the needlepoint and I did Lincoln and George Washington. And now with the mosaic, I'm doing commemorative frames of all the beautiful cups. I just, I think they're so beautiful, the, the, the tone. So I, I take a, fr I have a frame made and I cut up the mugs and plates and of, of the old um, royalty. 
I think I can do it because I have no feeling for it. Not feeling, I don't, um, I'm not in awe of them. So I can cut up their, their faces. And I always include Elvis because he's a king. I'm one of those people who needs um, a haven to go to. I don't like working, you know, I don't have to be frenzied to work um, in a crazy state. I like calmness and I find my garden is a refuge and a haven and it's just inspiring. I'm totally entranced by nature. I can look at a little peony or, sorry, a little violet or a large peony or just a daisy. I'm just, I'm enthralled with it. and. I don't know how it inspires me, possibly color-wise, but I'm just in awe of the wonder of it. And I guess I, I, in my very humble way, want to also create.